Welcome to Management Accounting or MA paper. Now, this paper is very practical so you can further manage the business in a more efficient and effective manner after you've covered this paper. Firstly, let's have a look at the syllabus of MA. Now, Management Accounting, accounting means numbers. So, management means we're going to be using numbers to help with the management. So, helping with the management in terms of planning the business, making decisions, and also to control the business performance, whether or not the business has performed well or not well compared to the original target. And therefore, first of all, we will be seeing the management information. The step one, of course, we need to get the numbers, which means accounting. So therefore, we will be seeing the nature of the management information. So in other words, the management information may be in an oral form, written form. The source of management information may be coming from the inside the business. So for example, the employee productivity ratios, or perhaps outside the business, so for example, the price quoted by the external supplier. And also the purpose of management information is to help with the management regarding these activities, planning the business, making decisions, and to control the business. So after we study that, the next things that we need to understand is to learn about the cost accounting technique. So, what do I mean by costs? You all know that we spend the money out and these will be called costs. Let me give you an example here. Let's say we decorated the hotel and we have spent $2 million in there. We've built several rooms inside and then rent it out on a daily basis to those guests to check in. And we found out that when we are measuring the costs in that hotel, we have already spent the money out in decorating the hotel and to build the hotel already. And later on, we will be seeing whether or not we should control the costs per room or control on the costs per guests, okay, checking into the hotel. Well, this is a bit challenging. What will be the difference between these two then? If you have studied the management accounting paper, you may see that first of all, the hotel is an example of the service industry. And there's no point at all by simply measuring the cost per room. It is simply because for each room, yes, we've got a total decoration cost of 2 million, and we divide this into 100 rooms, and that will be a cost per room. However, if I were to change the measure a bit further, so for example, some guests checking into the hotel, maybe on a business trip, and some guests checking into the hotel, maybe on a family trip. If that's the case then, these two types of guests may use the room and facilities in the hotel on a different basis. And therefore, there would be different costs associated, not just with the room, but most likely with the guests. And therefore, after you study the management accounting paper, you will be using some of the techniques and new perspective of how to manage the business from the costing part's point of view. Instead of simply looking at, okay, we spend the money out in total of two million, and that's what I mean by costs, and we control the total costs, this is not what I mean by management accounting. But the key fact about the management accounting is first of all, you need to determine that cost unit right. And this is particularly important. In the previous example, it could be the cost per room, the room would be the cost unit. It could be the guests, cost per guests, but more appropriately, it should be the cost per guests, 
per night. Okay, so we'll give you quite lots of examples here of how we think about costs and how we use that costing information to help with our decision making later on. Because there's no point in not knowing the exact cost of a cost unit before we determine that selling price. Otherwise, we would turn that profit into a loss-making position. And this is why it is important to study the cost accounting technique. And we can further, based on the cost accounting technique, and to predict what may happen in the future, and this is what I mean by budgeting. We are looking at the future based on the costs that we set up before. And, of course, yes, very importantly, we also need to calculate something called variances from the standard costing section here. Quite a lot of large businesses, particularly fully automation businesses, so for example, Toyota in Japan, and some of the multinational companies based in Germany, that, they, that they've used the standard costing methodology. So this saves their time quite a lot, and we will see how we can adopt them in the exam and also in practice in our course. It's also very important that you bear in mind the performance measurement will be very key in this paper as well. So we're going to be seeing the performance, which means whether or not we are making money. We are measuring that entity, so it could be a subsidiary, it could be a branch, it could be a single company, it could be something else, it could be a manager, it could be a department. We're going to be measuring their performance whether or not they've achieved the original target. So, if we can do this, it's very important as a starting point, we need to get the data. So, for example, the raw data, which means the numbers. And then we need to analyze these data by utilizing the statistical techniques. So, for example, we will be introducing things like the method of sampling. And also, we will be introducing the time series analyses, we will be introducing the regression analyses, and so on, to help with our decision making later on. So I must say that these areas in the syllabus will be uh, interlinked with each other, and they would be quite useful okay, when we study the MA paper. How about for the exam? This exam is 120 minutes exam, which means two hours exam, 100 marks in total, you need to achieve 50 or more than 50 marks in order to get a pass. The exam divided into section A as well as the section B, 70 marks for section A with 35 multiple choice questions, two marks each. Remember, there will be no partial mark in the section A. So in other words, if you're given a question that you're required to select two options, you picked up one correctly but not correct on the other, you will get no marks in the section A for that question. However, for section B, there would be three questions, each of them 10 marks. Now, of course, for section B, there would be partial mark there. So in other words, if you pick up the wrong one, but you choose the correct one, yes, you will get 50% of a mark for that question. Also, please do remember, the section B, three questions, would be the task-based question. So in other words, you're given a short scenario, and you're given multiple requirements in the bottom, and you are required to deal with those tasks in the section B. Now, for the section B questions, most likely, they'll be coming from setting up the budget, which means forecasting into the future, calculating things from the standard costing, most likely the variances, and also calculating ratios to see whether or not the performance of any organisation has improved or not. We're going to be measuring their performance. So please do remember for the multiple choice questions and also the objective test questions in the section A and section B, you're not required 
to insert narratives. But you are required, for example, to pick up one option or two options or to select whether or not that's true or false and also to insert some numbers. Okay, I'm not saying that the MA paper, or you can call it as the FMA or F2 or management accounting paper would be absolutely interesting. And I look forward to seeing you then in the next of our section. Bye for now and good luck with your studies then. APC, accounting for your future.